the soldier's backpack. And Jesus uh, explained to uh, the, uh, to the people, you know, um, <coughs> whosoever will smite you um, on one cheek, turn to him the other. Right? And uh, he that would compel you to go the mile go one mile go with him two miles right well you know it's sort of like um not the direct quote but basically uh in the days there was in the days of uh, ancient rome uh when jesus was there uh but when he was born and Jesus was born in the middle of the iron grip of the Roman Empire. Now, uh, this was no accident. Uh, these uh, these empires, including uh, this, the present-day world situation, is not kind of a hit-and-miss thing that develops as it goes uh, out of pure chaos and uh, total confusion and uh, just uh, that's the way it is, that's history, it just happens to fall that way. Um, this whole history is what has all been predetermined as a result of the failure of what happened originally. And it, even, even that was not a failure. You see, everybody's uh, seeing the fall of man the story of uh, a man and a woman who ate the wrong fruit and got kicked out of a garden somewhere. And, you know, the next thing you know, they're face to face with, uh, yes, you guessed it, it was like 1 million B.C. where uh, uh, the uh, busty actress faces the dinosaurs, Raquel Welch. <laughs> She's a nice lady. Anyway, um, I think it was Raquel that played this thing. I, I missed the movie myself. It was like made in the 60s or something. But um, <coughs> uh, the thing is, yeah, you know, these guys were out there facing uh, dinosaurs, as far as we can tell, before the flood. You know, okay, None of us know exactly all the details here about what's what's happening. And it's too bad because if anybody really just stopped their vanities and uh, listened to the Lord, um, they would be able to get all of this. How do you think we got what we have in the first place? Moses up in the mountain. Finally somebody goes up in the mountain, sits down, and takes it down uh, the scribe of God. See? And um, he takes that, and he brings back the information. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Well, what do you want? It's totally, e extremely abridged version of it. You know? He's up there, for crying out loud, for 40 days, 40 nights, and then he goes up the next time, after he breaks the commandments. He didn't break the commandments, he just broke the... Um, it, it, they were written in stone, you know. Unfortunately, stone is uh, not shatterproof, you know. Paper wrapped stone and all that. Well, it, yeah, in this case, if he threw the scrolls at those guys and it was papyrus, uh, he wouldn't have had to go back. But anyway, who knows what kind of stone it was. Maybe obsidian, maybe granite. This is uh, pretty extreme, huh? Totally extreme, man. Anyway, so, um, you know, he's up there 80 days the next time around, and he has to get everything. Um, these, you see, God knew what he was doing. It wasn't a little man and woman eating the wrong kind of fruit out there and getting stoned on the knowledge of good and evil and becoming like gods and, uh, you know, all these other things. No, it was a criminal hierarchy 
even beyond the angulorum into the cherubim um, a, a, a segment of the heavenly hosts and you know what that means it means if you were to be able to stick your head out of the entire existence of all matter we're not just talking the universe here we're talking about anything that's made out of protons electrons and everything else that has all these functions of physics and gravitation you're going to find that there's something else going on beyond reality of this mundane reality of the of what we call the world which is like okay it's not just a little orb here that's whirling and think, oh, that's the world. That'd be the pun. The world means, you know, heavens and earth, everything. This is just one of God's projects. Now, you see, this is a very interesting thing because a lot of stuff comes into being because of mistakes and errors. Some of these spiritual entities are actually in existence now because of something that went wrong. So instead of having something beautiful, the beautiful, you wonder why this is such a nasty world? Because there's a lot of not only nasty people, but other things. Now God is in the process of correcting all this. And this is all part and parcel of it. It didn't have to be this way, but they wanted it that way. Okay, they're going to have it. And God's going to sock it to them. Now here's what's ha here's what's happening. The uh, one of the high chief entities was the bearer of the light, and um, Jesus is the light, the logos, the word of God. Uh, when God said, "Let there be light," that said, S A I D, is the logos. Now we're really stretching here, so um, well, okay. Basically, God said, "Let there be light." Now, the light is Jesus, and the logos is Jesus. But what we need to do is move on from there. That's a major topic. We're going to have to address that in some other time. Right now, we're just talking about going the extra mile here. Uh, that's down something on, uh, down on our plane of existence here. We get our our minds out of the lofty areas where uh, you know that's nice to think about, but we have some real problems we have to address first down here, and then we go on to the other stuff. So um, the uh, now this thing has a name, and actually I heard it once, believe it or not, on a documentary. Uh, his headquarters is in uh, what is today contemporarily called Israel. It used to be Palestine for the longest time, um, thousands of years basically. And uh, um, you see, the thing is that his uh, major headquarters uh, back in the days of ancient Egypt was a place called Memphis. And uh, he still has a major uh, point of operation there. But uh, the thing about Jerusalem is it's a very, very supernatural place. Um, now, what's, what's happening here is that the, uh, uh, you have a criminal element involved. They basically say, or, um, you know, they say, well, they've come into existence, they have the, uh, the, the wherewithal, now they're just going to go ahead and take it and build their own little, uh, you know, paradise, their Valhalla, and a, a nice hermetic world where uh, they're going to ma manipulate human beings, create uh, a world order of uh, human slaves where the human beings think that they, they have their way, when really what they're doing is being coaxed by these evil entities into doing the evil entities' bidding by thinking that they're commanding the evil entities to do their bidding. Cute, huh? That's, that's what you call deception. So what we've got here is that, um, you see, 
from the beginning um, these evil entities with the chief of them the what we call the devil which is not his name and even the word uh, shatna uh, is uh, as we say in the Hebrew is um, just the word uh, Hebrew word enemy basically and uh, <coughs> Now you can stereotype it down to saying, yeah, this thing is the enemy of both God and man. And, uh, you know, it's, um, it thinks it should be God. And in fact, many of the duotheistic types of religion um, talk about the coexistence of good and evil, which is a big mistake and has led those nations down the primrose path to destruction. Uh, some of the greatest civilizations in the world thought they could get along with good and evil, both together, and they uh, they were plunged into a uh, sort of materialistic darkness. And you see, basically, what happened is it instead of bringing prosperity to those ancient civilizations, it brought destitution. And we saw in the 20th century that these big nations that had these uh, duotheistic principles, um, uh, basically the uh, religions of Asia. Um, brought nothing but ruin, decay, and uh, destitution to uh, to what would have been a vibrant civilization. And uh, this didn't happen in the European area, so it's it's all very interesting. But uh, basically, what um, Jesus was saying about go the extra mile, the time of ancient Rome. In the time, in the time of ancient Rome, uh, um, the uh, this was revealed to Daniel, and uh, actually probably also to Abel. Now the only thing we have from the days of Abel was uh, the sacrifice of of a lamb which is the type of the sacrifice of the Lamb of God. And um, once again, that's a, big, a, a lot of uh, interesting things that we can get into later. But um, basically, Abel, um, what, what happens is that um, God showed uh, to uh, the, the empires, to, to Daniel, as a uh, form of horrible beast that arose out of the sea. And um, these actually, the beast of Rome was uh, something that didn't happen as an accident of history, just by happenstance. It was pre prepositioned by God Himself as a way to deal with uh, 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 the horrors of uh, humanity that had become come about because of evil, but also because of the criminality of the actual entities that had um, decided to uh, rebel against God. And uh, as we see, the tail of the dragon, which is the devil, drew the third of the stars from heaven, the third of the heavenly hosts. So uh, Jesus was saying, absorb these things. If they, if they go ahead and want to hit you, instead of going on retribution, on a retribution trip, absorb it. Uh, he's telling you this for a reason. Turn the other cheek is more than just being Mr. Good Guy. It's being able to deal with a serious problem. Now, also, uh, going the extra mile. Now, in the days of Rome, this was an enforced peace, the Pax Romanus. Um, Jesus was born in the midst of it. The Son of God came in the midst of this and was uh, given the uh, uh, his time in existence where he was going to proclaim the word, the gospel, uh, in a time when there was this enforced peace where nobody could be obstreperous during the time of, of Jesus. Now he was saying to these people, when they, when they tell you, tell, carry our burden a mile, because that, is the, that was the Roman law, a soldier could take somebody, uh, any citizen, and say, carry my backpack one mile. And, uh, you know, they, they went out of their way, you had to go a mile. Jesus said, go an extra mile with them. So this is a big thing. Now we'll get into this a little later. But remember, Go the extra mile has a lot more connotation to it than just Mr. Good Guy here. What we're talking about is being able to deal with some horrible monsters of history that happened as a result of the fall, 
and as, as a result of the criminality of at least one-third of the heavenly host. Okay, let's take a break in the breakers.